Can I welcome you to this short reflection and service of Compline which has been prepared for Monday of Holy Week. First a reading from the Gospel according to John. The Passover of the Jews was near and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for forty-six years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Over the years, Jesus had become a real challenge to the Jewish authorities. And now is the most significant moment in the religious calendar. The great Passover celebration approached. He had the audacity to ride into Jerusalem as the crowds acclaimed him, the expected great son of David. And if that wasn't enough, the next day he was in the temple court causing mayhem by overturning the tables of the moneylenders and driving out the animals being sold for sacrifice. No wonder the authorities were after his blood. At Passover, the faithful would have come from vast distances and vast numbers into the city to celebrate the festival. And they would have crowded into the temple courts where they would buy birds and animals to make their sacrifices to God. They had to change their money into temple coinage. And the moneylenders there would be making great profit for themselves by setting the exchange rates high or making loans at high interest. So here we find an apparently angry and aggressive Jesus causing mayhem and more than likely adding fuel to the fire of the already angered Jewish authorities. But Jesus' actions are an impassioned protest about the misuse of the temple and the impossibility of anyone being able to find the quiet for prayer and worship. As Tom Wright puts it, the temple was the beating heart of Judaism, the focal point of the nation and of the national way of life. But how could anyone come to pray and truly worship in a place where there was so much hustle and bustle and noise and all this dishonest trading, especially at the cost of the poor. The account of the cleansing in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark and Luke focus on Jesus' quotes from the prophets Isaiah and Jeremiah. My house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Matthew, Mark and Luke place the episode in the last week of Christ's life. But John in his gospel puts the event early in Christ's ministry and gives it added significance. He sees a deeper meaning and in the dialogue that ensues between Jesus and the Jewish authorities, Jesus hints at himself being the true and eternal temple.
the true dwelling place of God. So when the Jewish authorities ask him what sign he could give to show that he had the right to be acting as he was, he replied enigmatically, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. They clearly could not understand what he meant. And John goes on to explain that he was talking about the temple of his body, but that it was not until after his resurrection that the disciples understood that he was using the temple as a metaphor for himself. This great temple of God in Jerusalem would in a few decades time be destroyed completely by the Roman powers. We might recall the words of Jesus to the Samaritan woman at the well. Believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. The hour is coming and is already here when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. To use elements of the temple and its sacrificial worship life as metaphors, we can say that Jesus is the new eternal temple where God is to be found. And he is the eternal great high priest. And he is the eternal sacrifice of himself offered for the sins of humankind once and for all time. Jesus' words remind us <coughs> that, like the temple, our church buildings and our church life should not get in the way of people being able to find God and offer their worship. And we need to see Jesus as the true, eternal, living, dwelling place of God. Our worship, our prayer and our actions have their validity and their power and give life in all its fullness as we centre on him. In this difficult time we may not be able to gather in church for worship at our local temples as it were but by the power and grace of God in times of darkness and in times of joy we can join together in faith and trust as we turn with thanksgiving and prayer to Christ, who is our one true everlasting temple of God at the heart of our lives and the life of the world. Thanks be to God. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O oh God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Before the ending of the day, Creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep 
your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night. Tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. say the words of Psalm 31, the first five verses. In you, O Lord, I seek my refuge. Do not let me be put to shame. In your righteousness deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me. For you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord faithful God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Zechariah. I will pour out a spirit of compassion and supplication on the house of David, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that, when they look on the one whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him, as one mourns for an only child, and weep bitterly over him, as one weeps over a firstborn. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. We say together the Nunc Dimittis. Christ bore himself, bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. In the stillness of this night, let us pray to God, who knows our very needs. 
Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. In this time of uncertainty and distress, sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we entrust to your tender care those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe. Comfort and heal them, and restore them to health and strength, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray this night for hospital staff and medical researchers, Gracious God, give skill, sympathy and resilience to all who are caring for the sick and your wisdom to those who are searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your spirit that through their work many will be restored to health through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, as we stand at the foot of the cross of your Son, help us to see and know your love for us, so that in humility, love and joy, we may place at his feet all that we have and all that we are, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus. For the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. May God bless us that in us may be found love and humility, obedience and thanksgiving, discipline, gentleness and peace. Amen.